taken half a million years to grow and less than three decades to decimate. Australia's iconic Great Barrier Reef is on the edge of extinction. The world's largest reef system has lost half its coral since 1985, with 42% of that devastation linked to the venomous, voracious crown of thorn starfish. I'm Tamara Sheward in Northern Australia, where plagues of the predatory sea star have proven almost impossible to control. This is the crown of thorn starfish. Spiny and toxic, it's breeding in massive numbers on Australia's Great Barrier Reef, and can eat its own body weight in coral every day. Scientists believe that a combination of global warming and nitrogen-based fertilizers from onshore agriculture may have created the perfect environment for the coral-munching starfish to thrive. If nothing is done, it's expected that 90% of coral cover on the Great Barrier Reef could disappear within the next 10 years. Coral reefs are laid down by billions of tiny animals called polyps, which live in colonies. These coral polyps secrete hard calcium carbonate exoskeletons to support and protect their bodies. Each different species makes a different coral structure. The crown of thorns eat coral by extruding their stomachs out through their mouths. The coral tissue is then liquefied by digestive enzymes secreted from the stomach allowing the starfish to absorb the liquefied coral nutrients. I'm two hours offshore, heading for the marine research vessel The Escape, where Margie McKenzie and a team of divers are fighting to prevent outbreaks of the crown of thorns, also known as cots, from reaching prime tourist sites on the Great Barrier Reef. Are cots actually native to they the are, Great Barrier Reef? Yes, so they do belong. Yeah. That's not the issue. The issue is there's too many of them. They're in plague proportion. And that means that they're eating so much reef, the reef's no longer sustainable. So what we're doing in there is we're going in and culling them to a level that is sustainable. The team is preparing a solution containing sodium bisulfate a dry acid that's deadly to the starfish, but needs to be injected into every limb to be effective. So we've got Tony over there with his gigantic underwater camera, and Margie is now attached by a super long audio cable, um, which is hooked up to a special mask so she can actually speak while she's underwater. And they're actually recording the research and work and culling they've been doing of the Crown of Thorns starfish. Now this is a, a relatively quite small one, but that's really good because we want to get these guys before they really start breeding. They've become a total pest. I like to call them the cockroaches of the sea. And Maddie's got to inject them in the stomach several times, and then also in each leg. Otherwise these critters can just walk off and regrow. So that's well done there, Maddie. He's now going to become fish food. This is the only way to be sure that a cot has been killed. Even if pulled apart, scientists believe that, like other starfish, there is a chance each part of the original starfish could regenerate into another adult capable of breeding. So this is a fairly small crown of thorn starfish. You can mm -hmm. see the poisonous spines on top full of toxin uh, called saponin, which once it gets into your skin will start to rot the flesh. They can grow up to about 80 centimetres across. Um, they can spawn up to 60 million eggs. Yeah, 60 six, million. 60 million. So they are extremely fertile. With the crown of thorns starfish now at plague proportions, current control methods are struggling to keep up with the onslaught. But Dr. Jairo Rivera from the Centre of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies may have come up with a solution. Whoa! It's huge. It looks kind of like a cactus gone yes. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So these spikes are all poisonous. Yes. And what would happen if I touched one? Your finger is going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, the toxin would seriously affect me and could even lead to paralysis. So here we go, picking up a big ball of starfish. Oh, he looks like a porcupine mixed with a slug. I was out on the reef 
and having a look at how the divers are controlling the cots yep. now with the dry acid, and it's very complicated. It's very complicated. It's six to eight injections. They need to inject six arms, then the oral disc. With this technique, we only need to inject the starfish once. So this is the protein solution that we use. It's called Oxcow. It's dehydrated fresh bile. Bile is a digestive enzyme that is producing your liver, storing the gallbladder, and then release into the gastrointestinal system mm -hmm. and helps to absorb vitamins and lipids. Because this one Dr. Rivera's team was experimenting with proteins when they discovered that ox bile appeared to cause a violent reaction in the starfish. Okay, so this is really just bile from the stomach of an ox. Yeah. That's it. That's it. 10 mils of this. Ox bile is often used as a health supplement for humans, but it's not so healthy for the starfish. Fred? Select one arm. The okay, ox so bile promotes the rapid growth of Vibrio bacteria, which live naturally in the starfish, but will happily attack their host when proteins in the bile give them the right conditions to bloom. What is happening now? This, this starfish is doing a little bit of a, a jitterbug here. They show hyperactivity during the first two hours after the injection. Then you will see a lot of mucus production. After that, blisters. Then open source, exposure of digestive glands, and finally dead at 24 hours. Well, I feel a little bit strange because I and my needle here pretty much just condemned that starfish to death. Yes, but it's for a good cause. I'll return in 24 hours to see if Dr. Rivera's one-shot solution has done its deadly job. But for now, I'm heading inland to the sugarcane fields. Part of the answer to the Great Barrier Reef's problem lies not underwater, but deep in the agricultural heartland of northern Queensland. John is one of a growing number of farmers who are cooperating with a project known as Reef Rescue. Their aim is to stop rainfall washing agricultural fertilizers into the ocean and nourishing the crown of thorn starfish. Oh, that was a sudden little burst yeah, of rain. Yeah, burst of rain there, yeah. So this is what causes a little bit of trouble. It depends on how fast it comes down, depends how much runoff we get, so that's what we're trying to to stop a little bit of the runoff. Reef Rescue have been helping control runoff from John's farm by planting buffer zones between his crops and a nearby river. They've also funded new farm equipment that keeps the fertilizer in the ground and away from the ocean. What we do with this one is minimum tillage. Instead of working the whole ground now, we're just working about a 500 mil band on both sides and I come along there with the tractor and GPS and plant the plants straight into that. In addition, fertilizer is drilled directly into the ground rather than spread on top of the soil. The tops of the sugarcane leaves are also chopped and laid down between the rows to protect the soil and fertilizer from tropical downpours. So this is good for the environment as well as being good for your farm? Yes, it definitely is. It's um, being minimum tillage, we're not working all the ground, so when the rain comes where we've got bare dirt situation, we're not losing it all down to the rivers. And uh, by putting the fertiliser underneath the ground, it's helped us enormously to keep the fertiliser where it should be, not just sprinkling it on top and letting the rain take it away. So it's working well for the environment, also working well for us. Back at James Cook University, I'm about to find out if Dr Rivera's ox bile solution is the nail in the coffin for the crown of thorns starfish. So let's see what's happened to my friend the starfish. Let me show you your little starfish. That is the starfish. That That's actually starfish. doesn't look like anything anymore. It's just a mess. It's incredible. It's falling apart. I think we are helping the Great Barrier Reef. We still need to do a lot of field tests, but I think we're going on the right path. Dr. Rivera believes that in the ocean, the bacterial infection caused by ox bile could even spread to nearby crown of thorn starfish, much like a naturally occurring disease. If so, this discovery could mark the end of their reign of destruction, and the Great Barrier Reef could be restored to its former glory 